All right, what up, y'all? AWB, I'm back at it. About to get started with this uh, trial from Chili or Delete Laws channel. As y'all probably know, if not, he was arrested for basically filming in public and hurting a cop's ego. It seemed like they were being biased from the jump. Just just in the beginning, uh, part of, part of this. So, yeah, that's 180 days you know or what is that six months is crazy just just for just for hurting the cop feelings six months in jail for hurting the cops feelings and the and a corrupt judge that will support that and that's what i talk about all the time when i say oh you think it's just gonna be simple oh you just gonna go and you just gonna uh take when people are like oh take the ride just take the ride no because you end up in situations like this you could not have done anything, but you end up with a corrupt judge and now he's facing six months in jail based on nothing. No laws broke. He didn't break any laws. They didn't. They convicted him of some BS like that. I don't see how he ended up doing six months for this. And and it what makes me mad is the people who are happy about it. Like, oh, he finally got what that that should be a it, we all should be looking at that and be terrified that this can happen to anybody. I keep telling people I'm not. That's why I'm not eager to just, oh, yeah, take me. In. No, take me in. No, no, you know, you don't know what can you don't know what that judge is going to be like. You don't know if you even going to make it to where they're trying to take you. Like it's all type of stuff you got to be thinking about. Then then you got to wonder if your equipment is going to make it you all of this to happen and you and they'll delete your evidence now you don't have no evidence there's your word against theirs and everybody's corrupting the whole system you know you up against a lot five. Are you Mr. DeCastro? Can you turn off the phone, please? The one that's in your hand. Just do it again with my lawyer. He's on his way here now. I'm just waiting for him to get there. All right, I'm going to wait for your attorney, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jose. So before we get started, they did not allow him to represent himself, which I mean, you should have that option. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend representing myself uh, or somebody representing themselves, but you do have that option. Which he didn't have that option because I think she forced him to. Castro, 23CR, 01305. Good morning, Your Honor. Agnes Othello, Good morning, State. Good morning, Mike. Let me on behalf of the defendant's president this morning. So I have signed two media requests that permit recording or photographing these proceedings, but I have not granted any other requests to record or live stream these proceedings. So I need Mr. DeCastro. And everybody else who wants to stay in the courtroom to surrender their phones or you can leave look look how look how she just shut down the first amendment right there because she knows she about to do some uh underhanded stuff i'm glad we do have some type of video for this but you know you the and it the honorable and Zim, zimmerman oh no <laughs> We know about that Zimmerman name. Any Mr. DeCastro that empty all of his pockets? What's that? Yeah, empty your pockets, pockets and give up your phones to the judge. I have to give you my phones? Crazy. Yeah. My phones have to be completely off. Yep. Yeah. I don't really want to be part of your YouTube channel. So you already are. Sorry? You already are. I'll see. I'm not going to give you this guy, though. I'll give you something else. No. 
So the judge just said she doesn't want to be a part of the YouTube channel. But this, the judge is a public servant. That's what, this is what this whole thing is about. They are public servants. Why don't they know that? No, they're going to go to my marshal. Excuse me? I said he's a pig. Okay. So I'm not going to permit you to speak to anybody in my courtroom in that manner. And if you don't want to apologize, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I apologize. So she's going to hold him in, like, this is this is the part that I first, that I started, like, within the first two minutes, it's just starting off crazy. She's going to hold him in contempt because she he called the, the, what is, the bailiff or whatever, uh, a pig. Like, come on now. And if you, if you don't say sorry, yeah, I'm going to hold you in, like, come on now. What is that? What? What is that? What law is? What is that? That's just her feelings. No, you can apologize to. They've done nothing to you. Actually, Your Honor, when you were here, you came over and gave me a directive for no reason. So tell me what to do. Okay, well, I, I have all the respect and love to the court. I follow the rule of law all the time. I no, it is it is their their job to maintain the safety and security of the court. I agree with you, Your Honor. So, if you want to speak like that in my courtroom, I'm going to hold you in contempt. If I hold you in contempt, you're going to jail. That is not my wish. So she is directly capping his free speech. That that's what that is. She is trying to regulate and control his free speech. She's doing it right in the courtroom. This is exactly why he films, and th that's exactly why we why we do this uh, in exercising our rights. That this is the exact reason. Okay. All right. So I need to you to empty your pockets too. Suit pocket, pants pocket. This is this is illegal. This is this is a violation of my fourth amendment. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I don't have any recording devices on me. What are you talking about? How much? Suit jacket. <laughs> I don't have anything on me. This is preposterous. No, it's really not. Is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's from your phone too. Oh. They're recording everything. <laughs> they have they have a media request. Right, and I'm I'm not recording anything. Is that your your guy here took my phone, so he's on his phone's not on. Right. What is the difference between them recording and him recording? They have a media request. That that was her answer to that. This how do people get in these positions being so ignorant to the law? <laughs> Clown, work, clown show. No, I'm not going to take the lawyer's phone. He's an officer of the court. All right. Do we have everybody's phones? Are they off? All right. Good. All right. All right. This is the time set for the trial of State of Nevada versus Jose, Jose De Castro, 22 CR 013015. Is State ready to proceed? Yes, we are. How many witnesses do you have? We just take one. All right. Is the defense ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I have your request to convert counsel to standby counsel. I'm going to deny that request. Um, either you represent him or he should have previously requested a Beretta canvas to represent himself. That I just consider that a delay tactic. So that request is denied. Are you ready to proceed otherwise? I'm assuming you are. Yes, sir. All right. Will the state please call the first witness? Yes, Your Honor. The state calls Brandon Bork, and he's in the ante room. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please be seated. State your name for the record and spell it first and last name, please. It's Brandon Bork. Brandon is B R A N. So he just swore to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Let's see if he does that. And B E N Bork B O U R Q U E. 
Thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Good morning. Uh, sir, how are you employed? I'm a police officer with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. How long have you been employed with uh, Metro? Just over eight years. Um, what is your, um, like, uh, what's your occupation there? Like, where are you assigned? I uh, currently am a field training officer at Southern Area Command. Okay. And so are you a patrol officer? Yes, ma'am. That also trains um, newer officers? Yes. Okay. Um, were you employed with Metro? I, I'm assuming you are, because you've been employed for eight years. Back on um, March 15th of 2023. Yes, I was. Were you a patrol officer at that time? Yes, I was. As a patrol officer, do you wear a uniform? Yes, I do. Um, can you describe the uniform? It would be the same uniform I'm wearing today. Okay, and so for the record, you're wearing um, a tan uniform with the logo of Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department um, located throughout your, your shirt. Yes. Okay. Um, as a patrol officer, do you have access to or utilize a marked patrol vehicle? Yes. And can you describe what the, this marked patrol vehicle looks like? It's black and white in color and it has the LVMPD's logo on all sides. Okay. And is it also equipped with like, lights and sirens? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you were employed as a patrol officer back on March 15th of 2023? Yes. Um, at some point in time, um, did you conduct a traffic stop um, while you were working in that capacity? Yes, I did. On that date? Yes. Okay. And was that for a vehicle um, bearing license plate 748Z, like zebra, T like Tom, B like boy? Yes. And what? why did you stop that vehicle? I had conducted a DMV records check on that license plate and it came back expired and suspended. And where is it that you stopped that vehicle? It was uh, 4155 South Grand Canyon, which was your target. Okay. Um, is that over on Flamingo and Grand Canyon? Yes. Okay. And that's here in Las Vegas, Clark County, Nevada, sir? Yes. And um, you indicated it was for uh, a license plate that was expired and suspended? Yes. Okay. Um, so when you initiated the traffic stop, um, what did you do or how did you do that? I approached the driver, let her know the reason for the stop obtain her uh, identifying information, registration okay. insurance. Okay. Um, and I forgot to ask you earlier, but pursuant to um, your uniform and as a patrol officer, are you equipped with a body-worn camera? Yes, I am. Okay. And do you also have a radio? Yes, I do. Okay. And are those items, both the body-worn camera and the radio, um, on your uniform today? Yes, they are. Okay. And is that how the body worn camera and or the radio were on your uniform back on March 15th of 2023. Yes. And to your knowledge, was your body worn camera functioning at that time? Yes, it was functioning. Okay. And so uh, you made contact with the driver of that Hyundai? Yes, I did. Um, would you, how would you characterize um, the nature of your encounter? Or the, um, yeah, the nature of your encounter with that driver? Uh, she was cooperative with me. I explained the reason for the stop. Um, she seemed confused, you know, not sure exactly how it had become suspended, uh, but she was friendly and cooperative with me. Okay, and she identified herself. She did. She had a picture of her license on her phone. Okay. And at some point, sir, um, did you go back to your patrol vehicle uh, to further your investigation? I did. And as you were, let me ask you this. Um, when you effectuated the traffic stop on this vehicle, where did you park or stop your vehicle in relation to the Hyundai that you were stopping? I uh, parked approximately 10, 15 feet behind the stop vehicle. We ended up in a parking lot. Okay. And was the driver the sole occupant of the vehicle? Yes. Okay. And so when you returned to your patrol vehicle to conduct your further investigation, um, was the driver within eyesight? Yes, she was. Okay. And is it, is it your habit and custom and also your training to keep the individual that you are, you know, dealing with within eyesight? Yes. And so at some point while you were still in your vehicle, in your patrol vehicle, um, did something occur that's causing you to have to testify before Judge Zimmerman today? Yes, I had an unrelated person come over to start recording the traffic stop. Okay. And, um, we 
you talked about your body worn camera previously, but did you activate your body worn camera prior to the traffic stop? Yes, I did. Okay. Or, you know, just before you initiated the traffic stop? I initiated the stop and then I immediately activated my camera. Okay. And how is it that body worn camera is activated on your uniform, sir? I have a battery pack that's on my belt in the front and I press the activation button, which is that is not even important. Why is she asking questions like that? How see how do you activate your body cam? You turn it on. How what does it have to do with this case at all? Okay. And so is it is it just a tap of, of that activation button? It's a double tap on the front, yes. Okay. And how is it that you would stop recording? I would hold down that same power button. Okay. Um, or it can be turned off. There's a toggle switch on the top that slides on and off. Okay. Um, okay. And so you, the, your body worn camera was running as of you know the stop, the traffic stop being initiated. Yes. Okay. And so you described an um, unrelated individual um, coming over to you know your your stop. Yes. Okay. Can you describe this individual? He was a white male adult. He was wearing a bright colored hoodie and blue jeans. Um, that individual, do you see him here in court today? Yes, I do. Can you please point to him and describe something he's wearing? He's wearing a suit and a blue tie. Your Honor, please let the record reflect the identification of the defendant. So ordered. And so, what do you do upon seeing this individual approach um, the driver of the vehicle you have saw? Initially, when I saw him, he was just recording. I ignored him, continuing my records check. Then when he came over to the driver and started speaking to them, I got out of the car, approached the driver, and told the pastor to back up. Okay. Then when he came over, he was just recording, and I ignored him, continuing my records check. Then when he came over to the driver and started speaking to them, I got out of the car, approached the driver, and told the pastor to back up. Okay. When you first um, noticed um, so you you identified the un, unknown uh, or unrelated male subsequently, correct? Yes. And what was his name? Jose De Castro. Okay. Um, and that's the individual you just you identified here in court. Yes. Okay. And so when you first laid eyes on the defendant, approximately how far away was he from um, the driver of the vehicle in the Hyundai? Approximately somewhere within five to ten feet. Okay. And it's, and you indicated that he was recording. Yes. Okay. What did you see that led you to believe he was recording? He had his uh, cell phone camera pointed directly at me. Okay. Um. And so, is that when, upon seeing him being that close to the driver, is that when you told him you walked up to the driver of the stops vehicle and asked Mr. De Castro to back up? Yes, once he started talking with the driver. Okay. And why is it that you did that, officer? Well, I can't have unrelated people uh, next to my traffic stops. I don't know if he's a dangerous person, armed. He could be a boyfriend of the stopped person. It's for my safety and the safety of the person I've stopped. Okay. Because you're also in charge of the safety of the individual that this unrelated individual is going to be in contact with. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Um, and so you saw it as an officer safety issue as well as a safety issue for the driver. Yes. Okay. And so when you approached, well, you said he was recording, the defendant was recording. At any time, did you tell him to stop recording? No. I, in fact, I told him he can continue recording. Okay. Um, he can continue to record given what? So as long as he backed up and gave him an appropriate distance to work. Okay. And, and so when you asked the defendant to back up, did he follow your order? No, he did not. Okay. Um, and so what did you do next? I gave him three additional warnings to back up. Okay. And did he um, obey those orders? No, he did not. And what, if anything, did you do with the path, with the driver of the stop vehicle, the Hyundai? At that point, I chose to release the driver of the Hyundai and then focus my attention Okay. So that's where the bullshit started off. Because for one, he did back up. And for two, if the issue was him, if you say he can keep recording as long as he backs up, why did you arrest him? 
He already backed up. He wasn't even close to begin with. He was at least 10 feet from the from the start of this. So you what you want him to be back another 10 feet? That that reminds me of this video that I have up with this cop in Miami uh telling me to back up 10 feet. And I tell him I'm more than 10 feet. And he's he then he says, Oh, well, 10 more feet, just 10 more feet. And at that point, I wasn't moving no more. Uh but this it's just ridiculous. The whole point of this arrest is because this cop got his feelings hurt and his ego was bruised. That's that's the whole reason for this. Be, if you listen to this, it doesn't make it still doesn't make sense right now. So you're saying that he you saying that he didn't back up, but he did back up. And if if somebody walks up to you and then tells you to back up, you don't have to back up at that point. They walked up to you. So that's why I don't understand. Why do they feel like they can walk up to you and then tell you to back up? If somebody doesn't approach you, but you approach them and then you tell them to back up, what sense does that make? Um, and for the record, officer, at that point in time, were you the only uniformed officer, the only officer um, present at the scene? Yes, ma'am. And so at this point, you were dealing with the stop driver as well as an unrelated individual. Also, also, the stop was over. He let the he let the driver leave. So the driver's not there no more. It's just him and his hurt feelings at that point. There nothing's going on here anymore. The driver left. The the stop is over, but the cop is here escalating this situation because of his ego and his hurt feelings. And how the judge ruled in the favor of this cop doing that is disgusting. And it makes no sense. And I don't know how she's allowed to continue doing that when that's obvious bias and she's not following the law. And having to make contact or maintain visual both. Yes. And at that point, the defendant was not being cooperative. Correct. Yes. Okay. So you release the driver of the Hyundai. What do you tell that person to let her go? I just uh, said that she was free to go, simply. And subsequently, did you turn your attention on the defendant? Yes. And can you tell Judge Zimmerman the nature of your interaction with the defendant um, after that? I ordered the Castro to the front of my patrol vehicle while pointing at it and told him that he was detained. And what was the purpose of detaining him? For obstructing my initial traffic stop at the Hyundai. Okay. And did he obey your lawful order? No, um, he did not. And on what, um, what happened next? We, uh, he continued filming me. I continued pointing toward my patrol vehicle, continued telling him he was detained. Um, all the while, he just continued shifting his body around, recording me on the phone, and refusing to go to the car. Okay. So what did you do in response? I uh, used my hand to escort him to the patrol vehicle. So I placed my hand on his shoulder, and at that point, he swatted my hand away. And what happened next? That's when I grabbed him by the shirt and I spun him around and then we ended up at the front of my patrol vehicle we were still standing. At some point, did you request additional units to respond to the scene? I did, that was before I grabbed him, okay. when I initially detained him. Okay, and um, I'm sorry, uh, once you had him at your patrol vehicle, or the front, um, the hood of your patrol vehicle, what, what happened next? Uh, officer Dingley, another officer in the area had arrived and he came over to help me. And were you successful or did the defendant cooperate in being handcuffed? He did not cooperate. Um, I told him seven times to face my patrol vehicle. He did not listen. I told him six times to turn around. He did not listen. It, was, it wasn't until I told him that he was going to go to jail that was the consequence of not listening that he allowed us to handcuff. Okay. And um, after he was handcuffed, but well, well, when he was handcuffed, was it just you and Officer Dingo present? Yes. Okay. Um, once he was handcuffed, what if anything um, happened next? He continued to argue with my partners, Officer Dingley and some other officers that were starting to show up. Mm -hmm. And then I focused um, 
my roles in completing the report and calling the sergeant because he requested a supervisor. Okay. Um, and at some point, was he um, arrested for um, a count of obstructing a public officer? Yes. And also for resisting a, a public officer or resisting arrest? Yes. And was he, um, at any point in time um, during your interaction with him or your continued visual interaction with other officers, did he cooperate with um, any of the officers present at the scene? No, he kept shifting around, and normally we have people stand still in front of our car, and I could hear him arguing with the other officers. You indicated you had your body worn camera turned on um, at this time. Yes. Did you have an opportunity to look at your body worn camera prior to court today? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you a snippet of it, and Your Honor, we're going to be screen sharing through Zoom. Officer, are you able to see there's not a screen over there, so I might have to bring mine over to you um, with the board's permission. Okay. <coughs> like, honestly, I feel like I don't know how his lawyer wasn't able to completely shut everything down. Like, I don't know how it's, this is so, it's so many holes to this. It's so many things that don't make sense. It's so many things that just don't line up nothing. Yet this, he was still found guilty of that, which is, you know, uh, like, like uh, Marcy say in the comments, this is, they railroaded him right in front of us and, you know and i still can't believe that it's people on it's people who reviewed this trial and talked about this trial and only have bad things to say about uh chili personally you know this is not about him personally this is about what the system does to regular citizens who are exercising their rights it's not it's bigger than chili you know, that's what they got to get past. It's bigger than Chile. People just, people are cheering and being laughing and being happy about this because they don't like Chile personally. But if you take away that, uh, if you take away Chile and put somebody else here, it's, this could be anybody. Anybody who decides to exercise their rights and they heard a cop feelings you know, you can be railroaded six months. His lawyer had to be trash. You, how, what type of lawyer? That's why he should have. He should have been able to represent himself. And I know he wanted to because I could represent myself better in that. Especially if in, in a situation like this. Come on now. If so, his story. I would have poked so many holes in his story. It wouldn't. Have, come on, man. That's all. That's BS. So the track, so the stop is over. You let the driver go, but you're still pursuing me for what? Let's get back to it. Okay, um, officer, I'm showing you uh, my computer screen. Um, is it fair to say that what's being shared on the screen, as well as what's showing up on my computer screen, um, is are two files? Um, one labeled 416B.mp4, the other one labeled 468, um, number sign one. Dot MP4. Yes. Okay. I am just gonna 
And for the record, Your Honor, all body worn camera footage have been um, disclosed to the defense well in advance of today's trial. I'm going to just show you a brief snippet um, of um, the one label 468 um, underscore number sign one dot MP4. Do you recognize what's depicted here? Yes, this is the initial Hyundai that I had stopped. Okay, and so do you recognize this particular file um, as the body worn camera of your interaction um, first with the Hyundai and then with the defendant on March 15th of 2023? Yes. Okay, and does this show the, the time that you activated your camera? Yes. Okay, it, similar to what you testified to uh, earlier? Yes. Um, and you've had an opportunity to see this entire like, uh, 12 and a half minute long video, is that right? Yes. Does it fairly and accurately depict um, the traffic stop and also your interaction with the defendant on the date and time that we've been discussing? Yes. At the location that we've been discussing? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I move to admit and subsequently publish um, the file label 468 underscore number sign one dot mp4. Sense? Uh, no objection. Uh, admitted and published. Thank you.
this whole this whole thing had nothing to do with justice uh what's right or wrong nothing she just wanted to prove a point or or i think this is really to send a message yeah th this is this was to send a message and the message is we have the power that's basic that's it we have the power I'm going to pause it at timestamps 9 minutes and 16 seconds. At this point, officer, do you see the unrelated male that you've been talking about um, enter a camera view? Yes, I do. And um, could you just point to where he is in the, um, um, in the video on my screen? Yes, he's right And let the record reflect he identified um, a male wearing like a light colored blue jacket um, towards the middle of the screen. And is this the individual that you um, have been talking about, the defendant, here today? Yes. So one thing, look how far away he is. He's not, he's not near the driver at all. I wouldn't call this near. Uh, he's in the area. But as he's approaching him, he's telling him to back up away from the driver. One step, one step, two steps. He backed up again. Okay. What are you talking about? She deserves privacy. This is she, you pulled her over in public. What are you talking about? And now he's trying to act like he cares about her rights when he pulling her over to give her a ticket. Come on now. You're not protecting her. He this cop is acting like he's protecting her while he's basically trying to rob her for for some money like come on now that's that's like that's that's like a robber coming coming up to you trying to steal your wallet somebody's recording it and the robber goes up to the the person recording it and tells them to back up uh <laughs> come on now. he backed up backed up each He's approaching him, telling him he needs to back up, back up, back up. And he keeps backing up. Now he tells him he's detained. For what? They are far away from the stop right now. This is when the cop should have turned around and went back and handled what he had to handle. He's he's backed up all the way back because you approached him. So everything's over now, but somehow this got e escalated to him having to arrest to him arresting Chili. And the somehow of how this happened is because Chili hurt his feelings. By calling him a little a little doggy and telling him to get back to work. No. You're not 
At that point, he was supposed to go. He was supposed to get a supervisor, which he didn't do. Look, so I what's the issue? The the driver was the traffic stop was over, so he was have. He was conducting an interview of somebody who got pulled over and this cop didn't like that he told him I, it, this is simply because the cop ego was hurt and the judge should the judge knows this yet she still ruled to throw him in jail for six months y'all this is this is terrible this is terrible Where you can rotate it. This officer may not have checked that beforehand. 
um, stopping or starting at 454 um, timestamp on the video that we've been talking about. Um, do you recognize what's depicted at least in this still portion? Yes, this is uh, me and De Castro in front of my patrol vehicle. Okay. And so, to your knowledge, after having watched this, does this fairly accurately depict um, your interaction with the defendant um, on March 15th of 2023 as caught on camera by Officer Dingley's uh, body worn camera? Yes. Move to admit 416, you were eight. No objection. You know if it's an eight or a B for sure? It looks like a B too. Okay. You know. Thank you. Yeah, I lose. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, 416 B.MP4 will be admitted and published. Thank you. And I'm just going to start from 454. Um, and I'll, may I approach you on it? Can we move the water bottle so you can see it too? Of course. Thank you. Judy, yeah. come on. You can Thank you. Yeah, I just want to say uh, let me go ahead and highlight Mitch's MGM's comment right here. And like y'all was saying earlier, his lawyer is trash. Like, I don't know how his lawyer didn't object to any, anything like y'all said. I don't know how he, like, come on now. I can't, I can't wait to see the questions that his lawyer asked and, and how he picks apart this story. Because from what I'm seeing, it's, so you basically made this. So basically, the the officer is saying that he escalated the situation that didn't have to be a situation, and you know, for one, if somebody is outside recording, obviously recording, what's the issue? Oh, you saying they need to back up? So he did back up. So now you're saying, okay, you want him to back up some more? Well, how much do you want? How much do you want him to back up? You didn't say. You just keep saying back up, back up, back up, which is crazy. Then he's all the way back up. He he backed all the way up, and then what triggered you was, and this is what the lawyers should have pointed out, and I don't know how they didn't. Is so it seems like at this point where he told when he called you a name, when he called you a name, this. At that point, it seemed like you were uh, emotionally triggered. Is that what caused you to detain him? And I would look for the reaction uh, of this officer based on that question, because you know it would have got a reaction. And then I would have kept going into that. But I don't, I don't know what his lawyer did at, at this point, but I'm sure interested to find out. So we'll see. Kells Bells, what's up? What's up? Is there any way to rotate it so it's right side up? No, I'm sorry. This way. <laughs> How stupid is that? It hold on, let me make sure he, he did he say maybe I'm mis mistaken. I'm gonna back it up. But he did he say if you don't uh if you don't put your hands behind your back, you're going to jail? <laughs> hold on, let I know he didn't say that. Like he wasn't going to jail before, <laughs> like he wasn't going to jail already.
Okay, I'm going to stop it at 11.35. So, officer, um, did the body-worn camera uh, portions that we played, um, or that I played, fairly and accurately depict uh, your interaction with the defendant on March 15th of 2023? Yes, it did. Um, concerning, um, I just want to talk with a little bit about what was depicted in the video. In the video from your body worn camera, it shows you know the, the state of your stop with uh, the Hyundai driver. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And at some point prior to you making contact with the defendant, you noticed him kind of recording further away from the vehicle, correct? Yes. Yes. And at that point yes. in time. You didn't have a problem with that. You didn't really approach the defendant yet, correct? Correct. It was when he started making contact with the driver, your stopped uh, driver, um, that you approached him and asked, asked him to back up. Right? Yes. And, it's and if his lawyer doesn't point out, okay, what part is that? What part of that is illegal? What part of that is illegal? 
You can talk to people. You don't. It's not a force field around that traffic stop where you can't talk to the person that you, you can. What law is that? What law? If he doesn't ask him, what law did he break by talking to the driver of the of the car that you pulled over? What law? What law did he break by doing that? I know it's going to be crickets because it's come on, man. How his lawyer doesn't. I don't know how his lawyer doesn't, you know, get this whole case thrown out. At some point in time in the video, it's recorded. But he I think they all in on it. The, the lawyer, the judge, the prosecutor, the cop. The whole department in the in the back end of this, every all of them was just gunning to railroad Chile because they don't like him. This is not about my personal feelings about Chile or supporting Chile personally. This case is insane. It's insane what's happening here. You told him that he is allowed to record, but he just needed to back up. Yes. Okay. And what was the reason for you trying to maintain one, the lack of uh, no contact with the stopped person, and two, um, trying to gain distance between the defendant, yourself, and the stopped driver? My first intention is I wasn't trying to delay my traffic stop any longer than it had to be. I was trying to make it as short as possible for the driver. And then the second was for officer safety. What we're taught in the academy is that uh, for a normal human's reaction time, with open grounds, anything within 21 feet, um, that suspect would be able to charge an officer without them being able to react to that. All right. And at that point in time, you were the only officer present, correct? Yes. Okay. And when he began, or when the defendant um, failed to obey your command to back up, that's when you decided to engage him? Yes. Okay. Um, Questions for this witness. Thank you. Good morning, officer. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'm well. How are you? Very well. Um, how many feet did you order the defendant to back up specific, uh, specifically? I never had an opportunity to give him an exact distance. He had every opportunity from, from the first words, hey, I need you to stand back 15 feet instead of just back up, back up, back up. So let's see if the or let's see if the, the lawyer continues on that because I feel like that's a good question. You just going to let him get away and say he didn't have the opportunity to? There was nothing there was nothing there but space and opportunity. How far back did you intend to have him back up you didn't even express that? In the background of the video, you could see that there was a parked semi truck and a light pole. I would have directed him somewhere in that area, which would have been outside the 21 feet. Your testimony is you never told him an exact distance to back up, correct? Yes, you never allowed me to. What do you mean you never allowed Stop me to? trying to blame him. I asked him. To He's still trying to blame him on this. He didn't stop you from telling him how far he needs to go back. He did not stop you from that. That could have been your. That could have been the first words out your mouth. Back up and he continued to argue with me. Hey, I. So maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe his lawyer not trash. It's just they was gonna railroad him regardless of whatever. But we'll see. So I can never specify exact distance. For him. But you had time to give him five commands to back up. Is that correct? Yes. Your testimony is he never backed up when you were giving him commands. Is that correct? If he backed up, it may have been inches, but he didn't substantially back up. You didn't tell him how far. And you just reviewed the uh, body-worn camera from your, your chest. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
you didn't notice him backing up every time you uh, directed him to back up? He did not back up. So you backed up zero feet, in your opinion? It's not video? zero feet. What was that? He didn't back up zero feet. He was moving his feet. As to exactly how far he went back, I don't know. But it wasn't substantial. So, okay. Did, did he back up or did he not back up? So did you just tell... So I would have been like, so did you just lie to me when you say he didn't back up? Because you just say he just backed up. Uh, but now you're saying it's not significant. And you're saying it's not significant. Why didn't you initially start off the conversation by engaging him and say, hey, I need you to back up this amount of feet? Why did you not start the conversation or start the interaction in that way, officer? What would have, as to exactly how far he went back, I don't know, but it wasn't substantial. He not he not digging enough for me. This this the lawyer not digging enough. What would have been substantial in your opinion? Or what do you mean by that? I would have guided him if he wasn't arguing with me back toward the light pole in the park semi truck. And what have again? Would have that is unreasonable. That's unreasonable. Been outside of the twenty-one feet. That was so, my goal. So, in your opinion, you have the ability, or you would in any traffic stop, ask somebody to look back twenty-one feet. Is that correct? Yes, for our training. And what was that training? That uh, while we're conducting lawful activity, we're allowed a reasonable distance to conduct our activity. Twenty-one feet is not reasonable. But where do you get that 21 feet number from specifically? That's taught to us in the academy. It's based on reaction time, normal human reaction time to a threat. So your position is anytime you're engaged in any law enforcement activity, you would create a 21 feet perimeter? Not necessarily. It depends on other environmental factors, such as obstacles and barriers. So your testimony is that every time you conduct a traffic stop, as long as there's no barriers, you would order a pedestrian to back up 21 feet. Is that correct? I would, yes. Okay. What training do you have in regards to the First Amendment? It's standard academy training. Can you explain what that entails? Usually includes a classroom setting, a PowerPoint taught by police officer, uh, academy officer. Uh -huh. Do you remember receiving that training specifically? Yes. How long ago was that? When I was first employed about eight years ago. Do you have any follow-up training? Specifically on First Amendment, we've had some follow-up training uh, regarding uh, First Amendment auditors. Okay, can you explain what that follow-up training was? The follow-up training was just uh, a refresher on the First Amendment and how the department wants to handle or react to first time auditors. In that training, did they explain any case law governing how many feet somebody has to move back or anything like that? Objection, Your Honor, at this point uh, of relevance, I think it's beyond on the scope of you know the charges that were to determine guilt. Um, wow. So as soon as he gets started, she's objecting but his lawyer didn't object to anything when it was plenty of stuff he could have objected to, like plenty. That's weird. Can you tell me what's the relevance? Yes, Your Honor. The rel What are you talking about? It's obvious what the relevance is. is he trying to see if the if the cop has any idea of the the First Amendment. What uh what it entails and does that and did that training uh tell you anything about a distance that uh that we have to have while we're exercising our first amendment right i mean come on but you see the judge the judge just look at her man she is despicable um 
he detained the defendant after issuing commands back up a particular distance. He testified he's received training. Um, I should be entitled to cross examine him about what that training is and how he's coming up with uh, the specific numbers he's using to. to I think her objection was with respect to the case law that you're inquiring about. Your Honor, our position is that he is issuing commands that are contrary to that case law and he's been uh, trained on that case law, then there can't be an obstruction of justice. So I'm going to sustain the objection and ask you to move on. Have you had any prior issues um, enforcing the First Amendment? No. Uh, somebody uh said said a comment that made me think uh of something too so the officer did say that he didn't have a problem so so the 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 this cop is switching it up because now you he need to be a certain feet back but you didn't have a problem with him until he started talking to the driver so which one is it is it that he was talking to the driver or that he was too close because earlier you said well you observed him uh filming and you didn't have a problem with that but then you started engaging with the with the driver then you demanded him back up and he backed up but you didn't tell him how many feet you wanted him to back up but and, and then you say he didn't move then you say he did move but it wasn't substantial or it wasn't the amount of space that you wanted then you said well how how far did you want it well i wanted to walk him to the space and 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 uh out that was going to be approximately 21 feet so why didn't you say from the jump hey back up 21 feet why didn't you say that in the initial when you initially saw him recording why did you wait until he was talking to the driver to now enforce this 21 feet rule this is me this is this is what I would say as a lawyer in the court. That's you know that's going to be my position on that, and I'm going to be I'm going to be pretty uh, assertive about that and getting an answer. I don't think this 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 lawyer is not assertive enough for me. Look at him; he sit back like this. He he's not being assertive. He's not. Come on. Like some of the questions uh, or the questions they asking are good questions, but he's not digging into them and getting real answers and really standing on anything. Prior to this event taking place, had you heard of Jose de Castro? No. Do you recall when you first heard about First Amendment waters specifically? It would have been in the academy. So that was when you were first trained, you, you had heard about the orders back then? Yes, when we were learning about the First Amendment, they would typically bring up uh, issues that might be a frequently seen thing. And First Amendment auditors are, are typically the ones that we encounter when there's First Amendment claims against us. Do you have any belief that First Amendment auditors are likely to be violent? Objection, relevant. What's the relevance? Uh, I'm only concerned with Mr. De Castro. Okay. Your Honor, um, one of the legal issues at question here is whether or not these commands are reasonable. I, I think that it has to be based upon his past experiences in training. It is obvious that this is so, that this is all a cons, they're all conspiring to rail railroad this citizen who committed no crime. It's obvious, it's blatant. Steve. Um, during this traffic stop in particular, what specific factors uh, led you to believe there might be a, a danger to officer safety? Based on his proximity to my driver, based on his demeanor being argumentative, based on his physical demeanor, his Veins were popping out of his neck as he was yelling at me. You can see his veins popping out of his neck from your 
back where your vehicle is. When I was at the driver's side window, I could see that, but not in my car. So when you see him walking out from, from your car, what is your specific concern regarding officer safety at that point in time? What's well, it's my safety and the safety of the driver. I don't know who this person is. I've never met him before. He could be peaceful, he could be violent, I just don't know. There's so many unknown factors. And I also have a responsibility to protect that driver. If I were in that driver's position, I wouldn't be I wouldn't want to be approached by some random person recording an interview. If you were in that driver's position, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have been what you wouldn't have wanted to get pulled over by the police so they can extort you for money. You're not uh, you can't. How are you going to be the robber and protector? You're going to be the robber, the extorter, and and the protector. Come on now, get out of here. Did you ever ask the driver their opinion about whether they wanted him there or not? No, my first step was relevance. Was your primary concern him speaking to the driver or him not backing up allegedly? My primary concern was safety. I don't know if he was armed or what his intention was. <laughs> Do you presume someone is armed and dangerous just because they're in public? I can't rule out that he's unarmed. But you had no reason to believe he was armed on this occasion? No, nobody had told me he was armed and I didn't see any weapons visible, but he was wearing clothing that could have easily concealed weapons. Crazy. This is insane. Man. So when you first came upon the scene, you were um, in your vehicle uh, typing on your computer, is that correct? Yes. And what were you doing uh, in relation to that traffic stop at that point in time? Conducting a background check to see if uh, her license was valid, to see if she had any criminal history to help me. Yeah, his, his public defender didn't even stand up. Like he didn't even stand up. Like that's crazy. Decision whether to warn her or issue citation. You stated your belief that the driver was entitled to privacy. I did say that. And, and what do you mean by that? Instead of continuing to give him commands to back up, I said something different uh, to try and help him understand. She, she's really not entitled to privacy, but she's entitled to safety. So your explanation is that you said that because you were just trying to convince him to back up, not because you believed? Yes, if I continue to give the command to back up and he's not listening, I can't expect something different to happen if I just keep saying back up. In your police report, um, do you recall referencing the fact that he had due notice in this meeting of what you were planning to do? Yes, when I gave him four commands to back up those due notes. But you'll agree with me that he did not have notice as to the distance you wanted him to back up. Is that correct? That's correct. And you said he backed up. How long uh, were you? And you said that he backed up. So why didn't his lawyer say, do you agree that he did back up, but you you didn't give him a specific uh uh measurement of how far you want him to back up and the amount that he did back up you just said it wasn't substantial but he did back up correct like this lawyer i don't i don't know how i have more sense than lawyers who practice law for years and years and years i just don't it, there's no way there's no way that my common sense and logic is better than years of law school there's no way i i don't believe that I don't believe that. So something has to be going on. It, it can't be. It can't be that much of a clown show of how a normal person who hasn't been to law school, none of that, just use regular common sense and logic. Has bet has better questions, and I don't. It's come on. How how is his lawyer? 
I wonder, like, how do lawyers not have more sense than common, than just a normal person like me? Uh, it's it's unbelievable. It, it, it has to. It, no, it, it, I just don't believe it. It is. I, is it on one hand of should I should have should I have become a lawyer or or they make it seem like it, it can't be that difficult to become a lawyer. It can't be if, if I have more common sense and logic. It can't be. But I know that that's not true because it takes a lot of work to become a lawyer. So this is embarrassing for lawyers in general attorneys all that this is like i know that the real attorneys and the real lawyers have to clown attorneys like this because come on it, i i don't believe it i don't believe that i have more i don't believe that i could be a better lawyer than a lawyer that went to law school for years and years and years so my level my level of logic reasoning and understanding and comprehension comprehension Come on, there. Theirs has to be what a 10, 10, 20 times more. They went. They studied this. Issuing these command things before you decide to take it back. Um, approximately 15, 20 seconds. And your testimony is you didn't have any time during the entire back and forth to tell them specific distance back up to. Not time, but no opportunity. How so? Well, every time I tried to speak with him, he would argue he wasn't listening at all. So if he's not understanding back up, how would he explain something that was more complex? Well, what was preventing you from saying back up to a particular location? First, I would want him to back up. And then if he didn't back up far enough, I would give him an exact location. That's the setup. That's the setup right there. But you never did, correct? No, I never did. No. How does his lawyer not go in on that? That's the setup. That did you hear what he just said? Let's go back. Particular location. First, hold on. what what stopped you or prevented you from telling him to back up to a certain point? You said, "Come on, man." Let's How would you explain something that was more complex? Well, what was preventing you from saying back up to a particular location? First, I would want him to back up. And then if he didn't back up far enough, I would give him an exact location. That's that's the setup right there. How far, how is he supposed to read your mind and know how far you want to be, wanted him to back up? That is a setup. That is a setup within itself. But you never did, correct? No, I never did. Did the defendant's verbal comments towards you influence what you decided to do that day? No. On the video, did you see that um, the point in time you decided to detain him was uh, specifically after he made an insulting comment towards you? Um, it, that wasn't why I chose to detain him. I realized that he wasn't going to back up at that time. His comments didn't make you angry at him? No. In, in your um, review of the video just now, he had both hands in front of him the entire time. Is that correct? No, at one point he reaches uh, toward his back pocket to pull out his second phone. Um, did you quickly see that it was a second phone he was going for? Yes. Okay. So once you see him reach the second phone in his hands, uh, he's obviously not reaching for a weapon. Is that correct? At that time, no, he wasn't. What time of day did this occur at? If I remember correctly, I think it was around 4 30 in the afternoon. And this was in a broad public place. Yes.
does the fact that this occurred um, in broad daylight in public influence your, your decision making as far as issuing commands to the defendant? Uh, it could. In this particular case, it didn't. And why is that? There was nobody around us other than me and the driver and DeCastro. Um, he testified he swatted your hand away. Is that your testimony today? Yes, that's the best way I can describe it. Um, and you saw his arm do this or you just felt it? I saw it and felt it. Um, do you recall in your police report uh, stating that you did not believe his intent was to harm you? Yes, I wrote that. Okay. And what is your basis for reaching that conclusion? Well, he could have been charged with battery on a police officer, which would have been more severe. But I wasn't, I didn't think his intent was to hurt me, so I didn't charge him with that. Uh, you testified today that one of the things you were concerned about was him not going over to your vehicle. Is that true? Yes. Will you agree with me that he actually did walk over to your vehicle at some point during the interaction? Yes, but it wasn't reasonable the amount of time it took him. What would be a reasonable amount of time? Asking him to step in front of my car and then doing so immediately. And how fast is it? This isn't based off of time, my response. It's just based off of interaction. Uh, I, had to, I had to tell him he was detained multiple times. And I made it clear what he was detained for. I said he was detained for obstructing. And I gave him several commands to step in front of my car. That's another one. So how the lawyer, how this lawyer isn't touching on everything. So now you're saying he detained for obstruction. Well, a, obstruction is a physical act. So how did he physically obstruct you during your traffic stop? How did he physically obstruct you from the traffic stop? What did he do physically? Crickets. So like this, come on now. No, this something is definitely up here. We, everybody has to see this and I can't believe I, I just can't believe that people were cheering this on and like, oh yeah, you see what happened in Chile? Good job. He deserved like, and they, and they watched and they sat and watched this trial and they see how, like, this is so underhanded and despicable. Everything, it was so biased from the jump. They, everything was to get him to go to jail. This, all this is just a show. He was going to jail no matter what. Seems like, seems like maybe if he had a better defender or that, that's why they wouldn't let him represent himself. Uh, but if I got to deal with a, a public defender who won't even stand up while he's uh, asking these questions or anything like that, man, I'm better off just representing myself because at least I have, at least I can ask better questions and uh come on man at least i know i can ask good questions at least i know that i might not have all answers but i know how to ask some good questions that'll get the answers i need so i would think a reasonable person would walk over to my car and then we'd have a conversation there And how specifically did his presence obstruct your ability to keep the traffic stop? Again, I don't know what his intention is. I don't know if he's armed. All I saw was him reporting, which and I had no issue with. I told him I had no issue with. At some point in time, if I were to issue a citation to the driver, my focus would be on the driver and what's inside her car. At that point, I hadn't pulled her out. I hadn't had her down. I don't know if she has any weapons in the car or what her intent was if there was anything underlying so my intention on having to cast her back up was so that i didn't have split attention he was too close for me to have split attention and 
It's terrible. Terrible bull. Oh. So one of the things you stated that you were uh, concerned about, I guess, from a safety point of view, was that he didn't identify himself. Is that true? No, I didn't care about his identity until I had him detained. Um, at any point during the I guess, detention of the defendant, did you pat him down to determine he didn't have any weapons? I did. Okay, and when was that during the uh, duration of the interaction? That was immediately after handcuffing. Okay, did you discover any weapons on him? No, I did not. From your police car while he's walking up, you can essentially have a complete view of his movements and what he's doing at that point in time. Were there other individuals around the traffic stop other than the defendant and the driver? Not that I can remember. Do you recall anyone walking through the scene and asking about the restaurant next door? I don't remember that. But your testimony is if uh, there was someone else on the video, you would have been ordering that person to back up 21 feet. I would have first asked them to back up, and most people do. And then if they did not comply, then I'd give them a specific area to back up to. You ordered him not to speak to the driver, is that correct? Yes. Well, I remember asking him to back up. I don't remember if I specifically asked him not to speak to the driver. I think I think I may have said don't talk to her or something to that effect. That was the whole reason you now you don't remember you said that that was the whole reason you said, come on, man. Come on. How is this attorney not following up and digging in on these things, man? No way. No way. How do I catch it as a regular person, but an attorney of years and years and years and years and years and years of schooling and practice doesn't pick up on that? I don't believe it. I know y'all say that, you know, that, you know, it, it happens not, you know, they even though they may study it, but they don't know it, man, this, this just, I call BS. If this is, if, if, if you can be this incompetent as a lawyer, man, it, it's not up there. Like I thought it was up there. You know, you, you look at some of these fields, uh, like some of these, uh, project, positions and job descriptions and you think oh that person must be really intelligent or that person must have a certain level of intelligence they have to be you know and then you realize no it, it's not like that and that's how being a lawyer was presented to me when i was younger it it was made seem like they were so smart and you know it like man if things were presented to me differently or I, I was able to see how crazy this stuff is, like I would have pursued way, I would have pursued a lot of things that I thought were maybe out of my reach, you know, at, at certain points. But, you know, I, come on. Come on. I was, I, <laughs> I downplayed myself a lot, must be. Did he speak to her before you got out of your patrol vehicle or afterwards? Before. I saw DeCastro filming. I stayed in my vehicle, continued my business. Then when I saw him speaking to the driver, that's when I exited. Did you see him speak to the driver after you exited the vehicle at any point? I... Don't remember if you spoke to the driver after I assumed. At any point, did you hear specifically what he may have said to the driver? No, I was too far away and it was going to be. 
it, is your position that anytime you're engaged in a traffic stop, nobody can speak to the driver? They can speak to them at a reasonable distance. And, and is that 21 feet? It could be, it could be shorter, it could be longer. It, again, depends on the environment, totality, the circumstances. Do you think people can easily verbally communicate at 21 feet? No, not without shouting. Did at some point the defendant inform you that he was a member of the press? He did. Did that influence any of the orders you chose to give or not give to the defendant? This attorney sucked. No, it doesn't matter. Public defender. Why does it not? Public pretend. What is your basis of that statement, I guess? Media, reporters, and standard citizens, they treat them all the same. So you becoming aware that somebody is a member of the press does not. Um... This is crazy. I know they say public defenders, you know, they have a lot of cases and they don't have time to go over every case, this and that. But in situations like this, I wouldn't even I wouldn't have me. I wouldn't have even needed to review or known that much about this case. I could look at this body cam footage, listen to his answers and make the case based just on that without doing further like this this seems like an easy case to win because no crime was committed and he didn't do nothing this was pretty easy to prove come on man you didn't even need to, you didn't this would be a case you wouldn't even need to really prepare for because everything is right there affect your uh, decision making in reference to your first amendment training Uh, no, and how was I to know that he was a member of the press? Whenever I interact with members of the press, they usually identify what station they're with or a group that they're with. They usually have some sort of identification and badge, and we have good relationship with the press out here. They don't approach us the way that DeCastro did. Are you familiar with the difference between traditional press or um, independent media? Yes. But again, independent media would approach us more respectfully than the casual. Is your opinion that traditional media has different rights than new media, independent media? Objection, Your Honor. At this point, I think we're well beyond the scope of state. Court's indulgence, I How do you lose this case? So your testimony is, a, if, if I recall correctly, you that lose? you received First Amendment training um, when you initially went through uh, your officer training. Yes. And then you received one follow-up after that. I can't know. It was more than one. I don't know exactly how many. But typically, that training is annual. And your testimony, just to reiterate, this is the first time you've experienced a systematic <laughs> issue of this nature. <laughs> Objection. I believe I objected to that question um, when it was posed as a violent encounter and it was sustained. <laughs> and I also objected on the grounds of relevance. Um, as the court indicated, what we're concerned about is his interaction with the defendant specifically. Um, and so I, I object. Sustained concern about this interaction. Yeah, not not only did he when, when he did ask the right questions, he didn't follow up with the with those questions. He just kept going, and then he would ask stupid questions, and then just like he would just keep going on with the questions that didn't do anything for the case. Like he this public defender is terrible, trash. And how do you how are you gonna be okay with this being on your record as a loss when it was so easy to win?
Uh, do you recall during your interactions with the defendant that you told him that you believed First Amendment auditors often pull out guns and shoot people? I didn't say that they often do that. Do you recall what you said? I don't. I would have said that he was a stranger to me and that officers get ambushed all the time. It could have been a First Amendment auditor. It could have been a regular citizen. It could have been a cook from one of the places nearby. I, I wouldn't have specifically said that First Amendment auditors are a high risk. I would have had him every question to ask. And again, just to reiterate, uh, your testimony is that. Objection. I mean, any time this person says, just to reiterate, I feel like I should object on and ask an answer ground. And I'm not just to, to hear it, but it just sounds like a reiteration of the question that I've previously asked. So my objection is ask an answer. I'm going to ask this question before I move on to objection. Tricky to judge faith, man. Yeah, I'm just trying to clarify. Okay, faith. This point was ambiguous, but do you recall the defendant telling you that he was a member of the press uh, during the interaction? Ask and answer. This is man, Chili got set up here. This is they, they, ain't, they did him dirty, man. This whole thing is a setup. No further questions, Connor. Will you direct? No. Thank you, officer. You let him get off the stand without. No, look at that, man. Not one time did this public defender even get out his seat. Dang, they did the man so dirty. If this ain't if if people can't tell that this whole thing was a setup from the jump i you know it's crazy it's crazy that people agree with this they they think that they they cheering it they cheering it on just because somebody they don't like got railroaded like come on man was the defense having witnesses <laughs> all right all those to catch bro you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Please be seated. Mr. Castro, before you testify, I'm obligated to inform you that you have the right to testify in this proceeding, but you also have the right to remain silent. And should you choose to remain silent, I may not hold that against you in making my decision. Do you understand that? I do. Do you still wish to testify? Yes, I do. Right, let's go ahead. You have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. Can you um, give some insight into what that channel was about? Objection, relevance. That's the whole what? That's the whole reason. Your the is that we're presenting a First Amendment defense, and the defendant is a member of the press. Um, there's different standards for First Amendment rulings where there's public policy at issue. Um, can't give insight into that. I'm going to allow it for a bit and see where it goes. I can allow it for a bit and see where it goes. That's that's the judge's answer. Come on. What type what type of clown show is this courtroom right here? Yes, I do have first. I, I do have a YouTube channel, and the reason I have a YouTube channel is because of how many cops kill people every year, how many cops hurt, maim, torture, rape, and kill people every single year. It's such an epidemic that the rest of the world, I get thousands of emails saying, "Only in America does this happen." I started filming cops because when I was cheated in two thousand two, objection and at this point, I, relevance. Well, this is the British Freedom Member of the Press. This narrative. To, so can you ask him a question? Yes, Ryder. What type of films do you make for your YouTube channel? I only film police in their official capacity. I'm known across the country and across the world. And why uh, do you engage in that type of filming? So I'm going to ask you, Mr. Me, to direct your questions about the incident in question. The reason I'm That's what it's called. Camera report. That's what this is. 
there wasn't a question posed. So I'm right. not sure what Mr. DeCastro, um, on the dating question, why did you approach that vehicle? I was filming that cop because that's what I do for a living. I am a member of the press and I invoked my right to be press. I always invoke my right to be pressed within the first 10 seconds of engaging with police, and I have thousands of videos to prove this. So this is how you make money? This is not how specifically I make money. I make money from selling legal documents to people. Okay. Do you recall the officer telling you to back up? Yes, I do. And what did you do after he told you to back up? I took a couple steps back. I just showed him that I was willing to back up a little bit. However, if I may, in Arizona, they created a 10 foot law. Objection, relevance, we're not in Arizona. It's the state of the matter. So I'm going to allow it because I think that goes to why he kept seeing 10 feet from the video, even though um, I will take judicial notice that you're not in the state of Arizona, you're in the state of Nevada. Well, a federal judge took it down, Your Honor. And what? Stop. Can you ask more questions? Yes, Your Honor. Um, approximately how many feet did you back up? I backed up a foot or two. I was at least 10 feet away from that car that the driver was pulled over in. And when you spoke to the driver, what did you say? Just after she was okay. The, the reason I filmed police is because they abuse people so often. Do you recall the officer telling you not to speak with the driver? Yes. And did you? Uh, make any statements to the driver after that can was given? Absolutely not. Did the officer ever give you a specific distance back up to? No, he didn't. If he did, would you have complied with that? Sure. Did you believe you were complying with the officer's commands? 100%. I also informed him I'm a member of the press and a constitutional law scholar that this is what I do. Do you recall the officer explaining to you why he decided to arrest you? There's several parts to the reason why he said he was going to arrest me. He said he was going to arrest me because I wouldn't turn my head a certain direction. If I didn't turn and face the car with my head, that he would place me under arrest instead of just giving me a ticket. Do you recall him explaining why he decided to detain you before he arrested you? He decided to obtain me because he said I was obstructing, which from my understanding is a physical act where I would have to get in the way. He said that the driver deserved privacy. I believe my First Amendment rights are not up for feelings. Did he explain to you that the basis of your detention was related primarily to the issue of privacy or the issue of you backing up? Well, I think from the officer's testimony, we can see that he's scared of the driver, scared of me, scared of everything. They teach them to be afraid of everything. So I had two cameras out. It's identified as a member of the press. I'm sorry, repeat the question. I, I want to get it specific for the record. Sure. Um, the question was, did the officer explain to you that the basis of your detention was because of you not backing up or because of the privacy issue of the driver? It was both. He said that told me to back up. I backed up a little bit. Then he said, she deserves privacy. And then I told him to go get in your car, little doggy, and write your ticket. And at that point, his face turned beet red, and his veins and his neck stuck out because we were over 20 feet away. And you had to holler to hear each other because the wind was probably 30 miles an hour. Did you at any point um, attempt to hit any of the officers involved? No. Absolutely not. Did you uh, intentionally swat any of the officers? Absolutely not. He was giving me unlawful commands. I should not have been detained after I identified as a member of the press. If he ever reached a hand out towards me, I wrestle and teach MMA and I have 30 years. So it's just a natural reaction as I'm retreating from somebody. If I may have put my hand up, as he said, as he testified himself, I certainly am a law abiding citizen. I don't break the law. So I would not have tried to assault an officer under any circumstances. Is it possible that uh, during the interaction there was inadvertent contact between you and the officer? Sure, he decided to go hands-on with me when he was giving me unlawful commands. 
and there was absolutely no reason for it. I was willing to comply with anything he asked within reason because I don't want to have a fist fight with another street with another man on the street. Do you recall the officer ordering you to go to his patrol vehicle? I do. And what did you do in response to that? Initially, I told him no, but then when he began to get physical with me and start to grab me and touch me, I said, okay, I'll go over to your car. His car was 35 feet away. I then led him to his car. It's on video, you can see it. I would walk right up to his car, and then he insisted still on grabbing me. After he saw me pull out an additional phone, which that's what press people do. So we had lots of cameras on us. And did you inform uh, the officer that you were a member of the press? Oh, several times. There's, it's, in the, it's in the transcripts. I've transcribed them myself several times. I told him I'm a member of the press. And did you explain to the officer that um, you have a background in constitutional law? Yes, I told him I'm a constitutional law scholar, which was a moniker given to me by other people who are also, they have their own channels, their own press. And that's what some other lawyers on another channel called me three years ago. And I since adapted the moniker. And just to get some, yes. Further background. Were you looking for uh, police to report on this particular day? No. No, there's the, the cops hide on the side of the road to pull people over. It's pretty regular in our country. I was just in the parking lot there. I saw that Mr. Bork had somebody pulled over, concerned for her safety. I began to film. And why do you think um, that law enforcement traffic stops are relevant to the public? That's where most people get killed. That's some relevance. Who's studying that question? Who's just right? Sustain. I'll pass the witness around. I have no questions for the city. Thank you, sir. You step down. This is Ben Trust. Yes, sir. All right. Any argument by the state? Your Honor, the state uh, has to find the defendant guilty of both the instructing a public officer as well as resisting a public officer charge against him. Um, the video very adequately portrayed, and I don't think it's disputed by the defendant, um, the, what the context was of the interaction with the officer. Um, I would venture to say that had the defendant just complied with the original order to not engage with the driver and to back up, we wouldn't be here. He wouldn't have found himself further engaging with Officer Moore. Um, this is not a First Amendment issue. Um, as you heard over and over and over again, um, on, on video, Officer Ford did not have a problem with the defendant recording. It was a, it's not a, it's not a first um, amendment issue, it's an officer safety issue. Um, here, you have an officer who conducted a lawful traffic stop. You saw the nature of the stop. I would have, look, look at her, look at the judge's body language as soon as she says officer safety. I would have pointed that out. First um, amendment issue, it's an officer safety issue. Um, here, you have an attention. officer who conducted a lawful traffic stop. You saw the nature of the stop. There was no animosity between the officer and the driver. It was rather peaceful. They were engaged, banter back and forth. Um, he would have, as he testified, he was trying to determine whether he was going to cite her or let her go with a warning. Um, and then you have the individual, the defendant, introduce himself to a situation. Traffic stops, Your Honor, are inherently dangerous, particularly in, in crowded parking lots. I guess anywhere, you know, I would venture to say. The officer had was reasonable in thinking that anyone who would approach in the manner that the defendant approached um, this his scene um, would have a reason to fear for his safety or at least be suspicious of this individual's motives coming. Man, I can't. This public defender did nothing. Mitch, he. He did nothing. He, the questions, when he did ask good questions, he didn't follow up on those questions. He didn't object to none of the BS. He didn't even stand up. Like, why would you, what is he there for? All those questions are questions Chili could have asked himself. At least he could have objected something. But come on. Yeah. The officer had no problem with the recording. The officer had no problem with the defendant. And the district attorney is. Inserted himself I can't believe into her. this 
lawful detention that was occurring with the hunting driver that the officer turned his attention onto the defendant. This is not a First Amendment issue. This is an individual who took his work, what he perceived to be his rights, too far. The officer was well within his right as well as acting reasonably when he asked him to back up. Silly, That's no, he already know. It, it, it's, it's appropriate. He said that was the training that they received um, in terms of the distance that allowed for someone who needs to, to do them harm. It's a threat as, um, assessment. Um, we don't know when the defendant approached whether he had Look at her. A that judge is terrible. He had a knife, um, terrible. Concealed, whether he had other weapons. And you'll hear multiple times in the video, Officer Bork yelling, stop reaching, stop reaching. This is an unknown, you know, when defense counsel asked Officer Bork all of these questions about how it is that you do this, and Officer Bork kept responding, it depends on the situation, it depends on the totality of the circumstances. Here was an officer acting alone, individually, engaged one-to-one -one with a driver. Um, but he had no problem with it. You, have, you insert another individual who, who enters the scene um, in the manner that the defendant did. Um, and now this officer's um, attention is going to be divided. He had every reason to fear for his safety as well as, as that of the driver. I, again, if he had just complied with the officer's commands or demands to back up, and you know, a lot was made about Hey, he didn't have an opportunity. Look, look at her. Look at her. Uh, a lot uh, was made about, hey, he didn't have an opportunity. I, I had every reason to fear for his safety as well as, as that of the driver. I, again, if he had if he had just complied, then look at the judge's face. Just complied with the officer's commands or demands to back up. Like, yep. And, you know, a lot was made about, hey, that of the driver. I, again, if he had just complied with the officer's commands or demands to back up and you know a lot was made about hey he didn't have an opportunity to tell the um the defendant exactly how far back as the officer testified even just with the hey back up the defendant didn't back up not willingly that's why the officer had to continue to engage with him and force him um into this into the situation had he complied he would not have been charged with obstruction had he complied initially he would not have been charged with the resisting. The officer was, I mean, you are going to have to assess credibility. There's nothing in the video um, or, or Officer Board's testimony that would cause the court to question his veracity <laughs> or his intention for that matter. Um, he was very honest in that he didn't believe the defendant was trying to harm him necessarily with the SWAT. That's why the defendant was charged with the battery on a, a, a protected person or police officer. Um, but that SWAT, Your Honor, I would argue, was meant to resist. At that point in time, the officer was trying to detain him and subsequently arrest him on the on the obstruction um, as depicted in the video. And so at this point, I think we proved by um, beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant did hinder um, Officer Board's investigation um, and detention of the, the Hyundai driver and that he resisted. Um, uh, the officer's um, arrest and um, or attempt to arrest him. And so we would ask that you find the defendant guilty of both. What do you mean attempt? He did get arrested. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so first of all, you cannot obstruct it on lawful order. Um, I disagree with the state that this is not. Now, this is the first time he stood up. I don't understand. And his whole demeanor is like, come on, man. And I wonder why they don't judge, they don't zoom in on judge face here, but they did on a prosecutor. On a First Amendment issue. Uh, the First Amendment in, in this context actually has two parts. There's the filming and the right to film within a, a reasonable distance. Um, the case law in all the federal circuits, Your Honor, it, there's no 21 feet um, rule that's been approved by any court of which I'm aware uh, that there is a 10 foot rule. Um, that Why is he not looking at the judge? Who is he looking at right here? Who is he? Who is he directing this to? What he? What is he looking at the clock or why is he facing the judge? That seems to be the rule that is applied by most of the federal circuits in interpreting the person. Like he just talking like. Uh, 
that's like that would be like me doing a live stream like this yeah y'all so y'all see what's happening right here it's just insane crazy um i don't agree with nothing like come on man that's what are you doing you need to be looking directly at the judge but this is why this is another reason why you know like we've been saying throughout this whole entire case is that it's all a setup he was railroaded from the beginning um I submitted a bench brief that, that kind of goes through that issue. If the courts had a chance to review that, I don't have that. Okay. When did you submit it? Um, it was submitted yesterday, Your Honor. I mean, at this point, I would move to strike because it, it's untimely. Um, but Dang. I got it this morning when I walked into court. Go ahead. So the officer's testimony that there's essentially this 21 foot distance where anybody can charge an officer and cause physical harm to an officer, if that is applied universally, Your Honor, it, it totally uh, diminishes and violates the First Amendment. That is, as the officer testified, a 21-foot <laughs> radius that he can attempt to impose. I believe this testimony right. was anytime there's not an obstacle between a, a person and um, somebody that law enforcement is interacting with. And, and that's just not what the law requires, Your Honor. The First Amendment gives their media, new media, old media, it gives uh, individuals the right to film government agents. There's um, no excuse to this man. requirement. And if the officer is applying this 21 foot uh, circumference to all law enforcement interactions, he's effectively eliminated the ability to film uh, law enforcement going about their, their duties. Um, the commands to not talk to the driver are also um, not, not based on any uh, actual legal justification. There's no right to privacy in, in public, um, whether you're engaged with law enforcement or not. There's uh, no requirement or no statute, no law that uh, citizens can't interact with drivers that are uh, interacting with law enforcement. Um, so what's, what's taken place here, Your Honor, is that this officer has taken it upon himself to essentially uh, act, act as the let legislature um, created these rules that have no basis in um, any law and in fact are contrary to the First Amendment. Um, again, you can't obstruct an unlawful demand, so uh, there is no obstruction of justice here. Um, resisting arrest, Your Honor, the court can see the, the video. Um, essentially what happened is he walked over to the front of the vehicle there was some dispute about why he was being detained that was discussed. Um, <laughs> the case law in that area, Your Honor, is that uh, if it's an unlawful arrest, which it was in this case because they're uh, essentially arresting him for uh, violating these unlawful orders that they're um, pronouncing, um, you, again, the case law is you can passively resist an unlawful arrest, and that's all that occurred here, Your Honor. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right, Mr. That, Chester, that's over. PC, that, that's over. <laughs> the problem with the argument that your attorney makes is it completely fails to consider the safety what? of the officer and the safety of the driver. What? The officer doesn't know who you are, and the driver doesn't know who you are. And you don't have any right to interfere with that officer doing his investigation and deciding if he wants to issue Actually, a ticket to this driver. And you are also don't have any business approaching the driver. The driver didn't ask you for help. The driver didn't say, help, help, you know. You didn't see an altercation happening between the officer and this driver. Um, the officer didn't protest that you were. Her mind was already made up. And it's bias off the rip and the title the honorable and zimmerman as she's look at her look at her she's looking disheveled burnt out terrible 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 you can tell she's terrible on the inside because she's terrible on the outside just terrible man filming there's no problem with filming you can film it's fine all right but you did it interfere with his investigation you did interfere with his ability to do his job you no how did she know she lying because for one it was over 
the car had already pulled off. What are you talking about now? What, why are we at this point now when the driver's not even there anymore? The driver had already left. Situation was over. He backed up. Then you said it wasn't about it wasn't about him. Uh, it it wasn't about him talking to the driver. It's because he didn't back up as far as you want him to back up. But you didn't tell him how far. This is a clown show, man. Hey, come on, I can't believe this. He about to get sentenced for this, man. Did put him in a position where he is concerned for his safety and the safety of the driver. So I believe the state's met their burden beyond reasonable doubt. I'm going to find you guilty of obstructing a public officer and resisting a public officer. Oh. So I'd like to hear from the state and then your attorney for our sentencing. Mm. Your Honor, in terms of sentencing, I would ask um, that our uh, defendant enter and complete a, um, an impulse control class. I would ask that the court lobby a $500 fine or the equivalent in community service. I would ask that the defendant be ordered to stay out of trouble um, for the pendency of the case. Um, and I would ask for a 90 day suspended sentence. And then talk as to each count for one concurrent. That's our request. Thank you. Your Honor, I'm asking the court to sentence the defendant to credit for time served for these offenses. This public defender, bro, get yourself together, man. Um, even if the court concludes, and the court did conclude that he didn't have the right to do what he did. Um, I think the court can see that he sincerely believed uh, that, that he had the right to do so. Um, because he does. Based on his past experiences and the training he's received in reference to the First Amendment, um, I don't think there's any intent from the defendant to engage in any wrongdoing in this case, Your Honor. Um, and that being the case, especially because of the public policy interests at, at issue. So when you say he doesn't wish to engage in any wrongdoing, it seems to me from observing. He didn't. Nothing he did was wrong. And in the video that he wants, he wants this. He wants to get arrested. He wants to get into an altercation with these officers. He welcomes this. This helps his YouTube channel. He called the officers here in my courtroom to take pigs. He called me, and he's not his up and down. I so apparently he hates every law enforcement officer in the United States. All right. Please stand up, sir. Are you finished with your request for credit for time, sir? Um, I, I would just emphasize, Your Honor, that he can't wait. The defendant testified, and, and he sincerely believes that he is providing a public service um, when he refused. I wouldn't have stood up, bro. Um, I understand the court may have a different view of that, but when we're talking about First Amendment public policy issues such as um, supervising uh, people involved in government I, I think that is something the court can take into consideration not to show things like that i'll spit on that yeah okay mr castro please stand i heard i sent you to 90 Hand days in the clark county detention center on count one 90 days in the clark county detention center on count two to run consecutive for a total of 180 days in custody thank you Sentence suspended or? Oh, no. I'm going to start right now. They couldn't wait, man. They couldn't wait. Unbelievable. It's a travesty. Look, look, he is. Go look at his face. That's the guy. That's that's the guy right there. Hold on, let me <laughs> take the screenshot of that. Yeah, man. So, I say you up the road for this one, man. What did you do to make them not like you so much, man? 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll fix your stuff. Mm -hmm. Get a hold of my assistant, James. Dang, Chili. Y'all let me know y'all final thoughts on what just happened here. Like, in this situation, I wouldn't care if you don't, if you hated Chili's guts. Like, if you just didn't like him as a person, it just, you know, it, you had every bad thing to say about him. That has nothing to do with how this case went along. This case was handled terribly. And it was so many, so many things from when he first walked in to when they got started to the prosecutor or and the, the DA getting to have her way with everything. And then when his defense, his his attorney goes to try to make points or do something, objection is uh you know, it was just terrible. His attorney didn't even stand up. Like his attorney wouldn't even look at the judge. Like it definitely so much stuff going on with this. I mean, 